Okay, so we're back with more comics from the shoebox. Uh, yeah, I left you guys with this piece here. Uh, this needs no explanation. I mean, you've seen this before. This is a first Silver Surfer Fantastic Four number 48, which is in decent, great condition. Uh, the Mylars make them look magnificent, but this is one of my favorite. Ask anyone. This is probably one of my favorite or one of the favorite or more recognizable Silver Age uh, comics because here you have well first of all you, if you pick this up you see the Fantastic Four in the background and then this this guy in the front so you're like who is he? And then he's a watcher, uh, you know he knows when something bad's gonna happen and you see here the coming of Galactus and you want to know what this Galactus thing is because back then back in the day Stan Lee used to just write a lot of monster type comics. I mean the thing is this is basically a monster comic but. He always made up big names like Gru and Mongor and Galactus, so you'd read it and you'd be like, "Oh wow, I need to know what happens next." So, but I mean, I'm I'm staring at this like crazy, but I love this book. I mean, <laughs> I'll get a reprint, but I don't know, just very vibrant. I would see this on the newsstand if I was back in the day, and I'd be like, "I gotta have it." But yep. <laughs> I talk too much about that book. I love it. Sorry. All right. Um, Amazing Spider-Man number 22. This is my oldest issue of Amazing Spider-Man. It's in a good, very good. I mean, the spine's a little busted, but it's still attached to the cover. Um, I like this uh, spider belt light, whatever. It's because I see it all the time in the uh, Spider-Man comic uh, cartoon uh, from the 60s. But uh, nothing really, nothing really important in this issue, but other than the fact that it's an old Spider-Man by Ditko. I mean, this is issue 22, so this is only in the second year of Spider-Man, right? But one issue a month, so. Uh, Justice League of America number 82. Uh, this is an Earth 2 book, because you have, like, here's Jay Garrick, Superman, and I think Red Robin, here you have Batman, Superman, and The Flash. And I know this is one of those books where they make mention of something. I don't know if this is like an Earth 2 Batman or something. I'm not really sure, but I have number 73, which was the first appearance of the Earth 2 Superman. I think this might be the first appearance of the Earth 2 Batman, but I have to, I have to open it up. And you just caught a sneak peek of this, but... <laughs> I love these. I mean, John Buscema, anyone who's seen this knows what's up. I mean, Silver Surfer number one, 25 cent Silver Age, so you know it's got to be thick. Get that, it's thick. <laughs> uh, yeah, I bought this in a set with number two, actually. Very high grade. This is very high grade. This is a decently high grade. I mean, it's probably mid to high grade. It's a, it's a bit of damage to the spine, but. I think the pressure from keeping it in the mylar, you know, evens it out, but here, big premiere issue, which you'll see on almost every book from way back then when it is a big premiere issue, but I love this because it's very Kirby-esque. Kirby was really busy at the time, so they got Basima, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> origin of the Silver Surfer. I think, I don't know how many of these issues of the 18-issue series are, like, double-sized or king size or giant size or whatever, but... This is an iconic cover, and obviously I had to have it. And the only reason I bought this is because it was, like, right next to it in the store window. So, <laughs> you know, when in Rome. I'm going to put number two in first, just because I still want to stare at this one for another couple seconds. Okay. Uh, King Size Special Hulk number one. Ten dollars, because it's beaten up, but, I mean... Battles the Inhumans, Jim Steranko cover. Uh, if this is recognizable to you, it's because they used the same pose for the Return of the Monster stuff for the Hulk, where he's holding a concrete Hulk sign that said Return of the Monster, but it's done by Kari Andrews. Uh, but again, 10 bucks. I think I actually got this cheaper, it was like 8 And yeah, I mean, I wouldn't pay like 100 200 whatever for a higher grade issue. I mean, this is the Purple Pants Hulk that I love, so... Yep. Okay, another Green Lantern. 
This is number five. This came with the previous Green Lantern I showed, and it's like an obviously it's number five. It's an old Green Lantern. Uh, there's a bit of writing on the inside. I think whoever owned it wrote their name, but still, in the Mylar looks pretty pretty cool. And he keeps losing his ring. Every Green Lantern I have, he keeps losing his ring. I don't know. Like I, I don't know why he hasn't fallen out of the sky yet, or maybe he's about to. But still, I like Hal Jordan. Uh, I don't really care for any of the other Green Lanterns. Like, I really don't. I think they're all just, like, like extras, kind of like Star Wars. Like, all the aliens, you just need to fill it up. And obviously a lot of people have an emotional attachment to these characters. I just like this guy. Uh, I like Kyle Rayner because he's, like, Kyle Rayner is, like, Wally West, where this guy is, like, Barry Allen. It really depends on what you grew up on, but, I mean... I will eventually, hopefully, maybe one day get the rest of the Green Lantern comics, so. Giant Size X-Men number 2, 68 big pages, Bronze Age comic. Neil Adams cover with the X-Men in their newer costumes, which they would later put on in X-Factor, Fighting Sentinels, Wind Strike Sentinels. Uh, this is a reprint comic. I think Giant Size X-Men 1... Uh, is the only one that's an original story, but I know there's a Giants of X-Men 3 and 4 which came out in the 90s and maybe a couple years ago, but that's just to cash in on the success of the Giant Size title. I don't really count those, in all honesty. I count Giants of X-Men 1 because it brought about the new X-Men and then this one uh, only because it's old. But yeah, uh, how much was this? This was 20. <laughs> so I know I got I got... 20 off on that. It was something like 16 bucks, but still decently great comic. Adventure Comics 462, the death of Batman. Not really, just the death of the Earth 2 Batman, but with all the Batman RIP hype and whatnot. I like buying these books um, when they coincide with events that are happening now, just in case they spike up, but they're also classic books. I mean, uh, I think I saw like four of these on eBay, and it's the only one I managed to get because other people thought likewise. But here you have like Power Girl and Jay Garrick and the Huntress and Superman. You see with the the white hair. This is Earth Two, Cal L, not Cal E L. And I guess it's Alan Scott. I could be wrong. I'm still not too good with the DCs, but I'm buying the key issues just because I have enough respect for DC to buy like the older stuff when these you know. 600 characters that would appear in each comic had more relevance then than they do now. Now they're, I don't know, the newer generation of characters look to them like, you know, old fogies, but I don't know, I could read this and kind of escape to that period of time. Okay, if you don't know what this is, well, I don't really need to explain, I probably don't, but this is the iconic Ditko Spider-Man cover, the last, the final chapter where Spider-Man wants to give up. He's trapped under this huge uh, piece of machinery in the base, in a sewer or whatnot. I don't know. It's flooding. He's thinking about all the people that depend on him and all the people he'll let down in his Aunt May if he doesn't break free, and he manages to break free. And uh, I think Doc Ock is the main villain in this. I got this really cheap. It's actually not that great condition, but. I figured if I had to get one Ditko book, it would be this one. Because it's still in the affordable range. But yeah, the Milers make them look sick. <laughs> I'm down to one minute. So, this was the Justice League of America book I was talking about earlier. This is the uh, introduction of Earth 2 Superman. This is a Joe Kubert cover, which is kind of cool, because I don't have any Joe Kuberts. I have a lot of Adam and Andy Kuberts, but... Anyway, 15 cent DC comic. I think this is the last DC comic I have. I don't have too many, but anyway. I have 30 seconds left, so guess what? <laughs> Part 3. Alright, thanks a lot. Take care, bye-bye.